This is the uh, crankshaft for Royal Enfield Bullet 500 ASBO number 38 and it's featured in a previous video where I demonstrated the run out on the main shafts amounted to a total of five thousandths of an inch because as I rotated it one clock was showing two thousandths of an inch in one direction while the other was going three thousandths of an inch in the opposite direction making a total of five thousandths of an inch run out which was too much really but that was as it came out the engine. Since then I've split the crank, I've done all the work I wanted to do to lighten and rebalance it and I've put a new floating bush big end in there. The crank pin was good, the conrod was good but I've polished it up and I've put it all back together now after lightening and rebalancing and I've just been turning it to check out the run out and um, as usual my clock on the left side reads in thousandths of an inch where the naught to the five is five thousandths of an inch and the clock on the right is in metric uh, where we go from the zero to the ten is point one of a millimetre or four thousandths of an inch so the movements on these gauges are pretty similar and almost uh, you know measure for measure in thousandths of an inch um, so I'm going to spin the crank now and where before, like I say, one was rising by two thou while the other was falling by three, making a total of five thou run out. I'm very pleased with this. We're showing two thousandths of an inch run out there on this one. And we're actually probably a whisker under two thousandths of an inch on that one, but we'll say two thousandths. But the nice thing about it is is unlike before the needles on the gauges are rising and falling simultaneously rather than going in opposite directions so we've actually got a situation where the two thousandths of an inch which would be acceptable in itself be very good one two thousandths of an inch actually in real terms when this thing's spinning in the main bearings one cancels the other one out so to all intents and purposes with this crank we've actually got no run out at all which is uh, well you just won't get better and all it'll mean is that that two thousandths of an inch when those main shafts are held in the main bearings the two thousandths of an inch will be transferred to the ends of the main shafts and back to the flywheels while the main shafts run perfectly true in their fixed points in the main bearings that very very minimal run out will be transferred elsewhere and it's just not going to be noticed that to all intents and purposes is no run out that's going to run really smooth so all I've got to do now the crank pin nuts are both tight I've just got to put the little cheese headed locking screw in this one I've already got that one in there and uh, I'd better get on the phone and order some main bearings and I can start building the bottom end of this engine up that's very good I'm very pleased with that I'm also going to weigh the crank it's probably about 1 to 1.2 kilograms lighter than it would have been originally but I'll weigh it and make a note of that as well and then we can crack on with the build of ASBO number 38